Basically, we're going to do, we're going to produce a definition of EA. Okay. Um, we're going to refer to the mode. Right? We are then going to define some artifacts. Right? So I'll put some artifacts out there. You guys will then say, no, nope, you missed this, you missed that. We will then look at some of the elements of EA. So I'm going to present you with my view of EA. Right? Okay. I'm going to talk through the stack. I'll present you my view. We'll have a discussion. We're going to look at some artifacts. We're going to have an exercise. Then we're going to look at three types of projects. We're going to look at a waterfall type project. We're going to look at an agile, and we're going to have a look at a JFDI type project. We're going to look at the touch points, right? Okay. We're then going to merge all of that stuff together, and then what we're going to do is we're going to do some mapping, okay? So we're going to map projects um, to the artifacts. So there's a bit of exercise and there's a bit of me, you, me talking as well. So just on JFDI, is that just FN? Yeah, just FN. Right. I got told off last night for, I didn't put it in the slide. But <laughs> you never. I'm rather, I'm rather pompous little son, so I couldn't use that. So. Okay, so. I'm not the pompous son. <laughs> <laughs> so, basically, what I put here, I'll put some statements up here, right, okay, and what the key words for me is creation, alignment, recalibration, okay, those are the three key words we're going to use today. There are other words, but we could use, we're going to focus on those ones. I'm going to present a notional model, right, um, we're going to map some of the artifacts uh, to that notional model, and we're going to then look at the enterprise program and projects journey, okay. Can I ask a question? Yeah, of course. Do you need the word re in recalibration? Recalibration. Yeah, because almost that denotes sort of backwards looking. Well, no, we'll come back to that. Okay. Uh, uh, there's a slide that I know. Uh, yeah, we'll come back to that. There's okay. a reason for that. Okay. Right, so the workshop structure is we will exploit and drive a consensus of enterprise systems architecture, right? I will present the notional stack, highlight some focus areas. Okay, we will then work in teams. And talk about typical artifacts. Okay, and I'm trying to break these artifacts down. And we'll, we'll come. That'll become clear as we go through. Um, I'll also present some focus areas, and then we'll, we will then work. Um, to map some of this stuff, and I'm trying to do it with we and I. So I'm going to give my opinion. You, know? you may think my opinion is crap, and, you know, and I'm happy to be challenged because we're all learning. But the outcome is basically a common understanding of enterprise systems architecture, a word there, an appreciation of if you're working in a project, right, the kind of things you have to produce. So, for instance, um, we did a project recently where the supplier charges X amount per day. Now, rather than updating a solution design document, we said, no, you know, preside, do a briefing now, or one pager, so long as it captures all the information. Okay. So, let's start. And at any point, this is a workshop, it's not a Dalgit presentation. All right. So, right, okay. So, I put a definition up, I knocked it up quite quickly, right, over a glass of red wine, and I've put enterprise systems architecture, the process, patterns and practices associated with the alignment and recalibration of the organisational technology landscape to that of its business operating model. That will become clearer as we go through the stack. But the kind of things I was thinking about, right, okay, so when we talk about alignment activities, what I'm talking about is how we run the organisation, okay, and we're talking about, you know, we're going to discuss the business operating model, and within the business operating model, you know, we might have business models, you know, um, also the drivers for change, if there are any business drivers, the technical drivers, the services, you know, if your company's involved in mergers and acquisitions, Regulation and third parties. Now that's just some I've put up. 
Right? So that I put up in the alignment. So basically, if your business, the way it operates and the way it interacts with third parties, government, um, or anything else, if that is going to change, then you, as an enterprise systems architect, are looking to align your technology landscape to those changes. That, that's what I'm trying to put there. And on the bottom side, and I may have missed something, but I've said, right, okay, so one part is about how the business is changing, so it's about how you know, the business you run. The second part is really about, you're going to look at protection activities. You're going to look at integrity, you know, not just of data, but integrity of the systems. Um, optimization, maintenance, efficiency. If there's anything else on this, you know, let me know. And then what I've, what I've done is I've said, okay, well that's all about calibration. You know, it's, you know, it's your technology landscape, you do these activities, and you're constantly recalibrating. But on the back of that, we've also got some creation adding value. We've got some stuff in the background, which we talk about, well, okay, new capabilities. You may have a new business driver that results in a new capability. Okay? Then I've also said new products and services. New services and extensions, so extending existing services through new channels. So that's where I'm coming from. When I talk about enterprise systems architecture, I'm talking about how we run the business and how we map it to the technology landscape. Yeah? Okay. So that's me. So anything to do with the DB is me. Right, okay. Now I'm going to elaborate on that just a little bit. So I've used this stack numerous times and it has evolved. I've added new things to it. So at the very top of the stack, we've got the business operating model. Okay? Within that business operating model, we may have business models. So your organization will have one overall operating model, the way it runs itself. But within that, it may have several different models. You know, it's a kind of one to many. So you may be business to business, business to consumer. On the left hand side, I've also said, well, how do we actually pull and pull resources in and out of the organization? That affects the business operating model. Um, the strategic drivers, you know, organisational, industry, um, and then the structure of the business, you know, if you're not starting from a green field, you normally inherit something, or, um, okay, so at the very top layer, business operating model. Now, when we start talking about the business operating model and we start decomposing it, we'll talk about some of these things, okay? But because we are talking about artifacts, I just want to set the scene and the context. Right. In order to realise that business operating model, we have a set of business processes. Okay? These business processes can be manual, automated, formal, you know, they can be outsourced straight through. Um, but you know, these business processes are orchestrated to support the business operating model. Okay? I'm going to whisk through this quick now because the rest is kind of in order to execute and orchestrate those business processes, we have a set of capabilities. Now, one of the things I've been thinking about a lot lately is under capabilities, I've put channels. I don't know if that's the right place, I'm still thinking about it. But then I started looking at the different types of channels. So IBR, web, you know, I started looking at the different types of channels and that's why I've put it under capabilities and services. But if someone disagrees with me on that, Please let me know because I'm still thinking about it. I'm thinking about you know the way it's all going to work eventually. And then under those capabilities and services, I've put data visualization, I've put innovation, um, tactical versus operational. So we then start going further down the stack. In order to realise those capabilities, we have a set of applications. These applications can be custom off the shelf. These can be bespoke, and it goes on and on. Yeah. We normally have a set of frameworks that support those applications. Underneath that, we have the data and information, and we have you know, what Ed was talking about earlier on, but we also have to, the classification of their data, how you're sharing with third parties. We then move further down the stack, we have the services, the logical technology, and the enabling. A wrapper around all of that, all of that, we have the value added hygiene services. So the stuff you would have as typical as NFRs, 
um, security, governance, compliance, that's a wrap around everything. So that's the stack. The stack has a point in time. That point in time changes, you know, depending on what your drivers for change. So you would have different pictures for each layer of the stack. Yeah? And then, you know, I'll put current transitional target. The trans I always use the word transitional because it's an interim state to the target. Anyway, so that's the stack. And I've rushed through that a bit because I want to bring that up. And I printed some of these out. Okay? And we're going to use these to hold. Behind this, behind this, so basically what I've done here is I've gone to the next level of decomposition. Okay? So it's all fine, it's all fine putting up a stack and it, it's fantastic. But how do you actually, and we're talking about the enterprise architecture mindset, right? Now bear in mind the mindset is about alignment of the business operating model to the technology landscape. So at the very top, I've put the tools that you might want to use in order to understand that particular layer. So here in the right hand side, we've got ports five forces. You know, standard model, you can use you know, market analysis. Um, I've got various tools that you might want to use. Um, so I've, I've kind of, you know, I've tried to, so I don't know if you know, in macroeconomics we have structure, conduct, performance, how one relates to the other. So I'll try to put that in the business operating model. In order for an enterprise architect to understand how the business is operating, not in its current state, but also the external forces around, these are some of the type of things that you would need to consider. Okay? But that's very businessy, right? Now, we then go down a layer and we start looking at the typical activities related to business processes. So, you may disagree. Why would, the, why would an EA care about notational standards? Well, that's quite important because notational standards are the way you represent your organisation. Okay? Uh, I'm biased towards UML. You know? um, and then also I've put in, so I've put manual, blah, 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 outsource, redesign and notations. You know? And what I'm trying to do here is go through each layer and say that at each layer there's a lot of thinking to do. right? And your average EA needs to be, you know, you're not going to do a four-day tug-out course and understand all this stuff, right? It's understanding the market, your technology landscape, and how everything interacts, okay? Now, the so reason... There's tools, then? Mm -hmm. um, there's well, there's tools, there's tools. So, so I've put, uh, I've put notations, I've put redesigns, so under redesign, I've put... Oh, okay. Tools, methods to identify processes for redesign, gaps, improvements. Yeah? Okay. And then the, the bit below, the capabilities and services, um, I've also put innovation, because innovation in its own self is a capability service. This round wheel, I've done that on purpose. If you want to know what that is, you're going to have to buy my book. <laughs> anyway, right? But that's basically the challenge. Yeah? And then you go down, you go into the applications, then you go down even further. And at the very bottom layer, you know, I've got service delivery, service design, security, and all the other stuff. So this, I would say, is you step back, and this is your what an enterprise architect would encapsulate. Yeah? Okay. Right, so that's my view of enterprise architecture. Happy to be challenged on it, right? Happy for, you know, if I've done anything wrong, if I've missed something, I'm happy to be corrected. Okay? So... This is like Dragon's Den, we all go around the table. Like, this is really <laughs> <laughs> no, so, that's what I've put out there. What do you guys? So now I'm going to start on this side, and you tell me what you think an artifact is. Quite important as we move forward. Do you agree with that, first of all? Without splitting words, yes. Yeah. You, you can argue it for as long as you want, but yeah. you agree, it's like it. It's like okay. It. But can I, there's two things I want to highlight here, right? One is for me is an object of value, okay? So, what really winds me up big time, right? 
<laughs> is we talk about architectural principles. So we have a document that's called an architectural principle document. Now, it serves its function, right? But to add value, to continue to add value, you know, that, that principle, you don't need to spend years producing it, okay? okay? Um, and I, I know from one example where I spent three months just one guy wasting his life on architectural principles. Okay? Um, so for me, the key word is object of value, okay? and the other one is control informed direct landscape, technology landscape. Okay? Right, so with that in mind, I'm going to put up some examples of what I think. Um, Right, so what do you, we've got three boards here, right, okay, the reason I put, so I mentioned alignment, and I mentioned calibration and create, okay, so what I'd like you to do is give me, I don't know, five, six artifacts that you think you would use in a project, you know, it doesn't matter what a solution design document is an example, just, you know, give me five or six things, so on that board, I want the alignment stuff, you guys, yeah, mm -hmm. paint for you. On that board, I want calibration, right? Okay, All right. I did put recalibration, right? Okay, um, and on this board, the stuff that we would. It's too much, Jim. All right. The, the way to think of it is running the business. So anything you do to run your business, what are the artifacts that you need, you know? Um, and there's some clues here, so you could rip that off. Right, on this side, so you fall on that, you fall on that, and sorry, yeah, you fall on that. You think about the calibration activities, so that's more to do with the technology landscape. So, um, production acceptance process, that could be an artifact, okay? And this one, you guys, and the glass in the back, the kind of things that we would always have to create new. Yeah? Okay? Why don't we spend 10 minutes on that? Okay? Just don't, don't, don't knock, yeah, just knock yourselves out and <coughs> try and come up with stuff. Go for it. <coughs> We had some stuff on the create, so I'm just going to throw out some ideas out there. And then I'm going to put some example products out, and then we're going to cut those projects. And that's really what we're here for. Okay? So on the, on the alignment side, do you have know, business process models? Yeah, definitely. Business models, definitely. Financial control. Right there. Put that, okay. Alright. That's interesting. So, for example, I'll give you an example. If I was going into a company and they said, oh, by the way, we're doing a merger, we're acquiring a company, and we want to bring them into our framework, then all I would do would be a difference architecture, or oh, okay, a sort of, let's, let's call it this one, it's a bit horrible, but a sort of umbilical cord <laughs> architecture, you know? What, bring the whole thing? A connectivity type of architecture. That's all I would do, because because if, if my digital charter said that actually I'm never going to connect these two companies together, I'm actually going to run them in a two-tier fashion, but then, then that would dictate doing. the sort of alignment that I did. I can, I've got a bit, probably, I've got an example as well. So at the moment, one of my projects is we're looking at the RP platforms. Good, um, good man. <laughs> uh, um, through merger and acquisitions, we've got oh, uh, a, a complicated <laughs> financial control Framework, which right, is but you still got charter accounts for the two companies. That's your style for ten, isn't it? Your yeah. Well, yes. Yeah, but you might not be interested in the 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 second tier, but you might only be interested in 
a roll-up version of the second tier at the top yeah. tier. See, okay, so I worked at UBS when the two banks were merging, so maybe it's not the same. Yeah. But when I think of financial control framework, I think about the wrappers around, you know, architect, you know, the accounting practice principles and all yeah. that kind of stuff. Yeah. For me, what I would be looking at is I would be looking at common common services. So say for instance you've got Oracle and you've got SAP and it's a financial system. I'll say, right, do they both need the same um, yeah. you don't need to go that deep these days. You've got to you got to back down to your business models and your business yeah, they can't yeah. that. Business capability, business drivers, internal external, it's far off. Right. So I'm too confident. Oh, great point. No, I think I, I think you know what? I think if you think you can buy a piece of software and parachute in without you know. No, I think yeah. I think you're missing that. Let me have another go. Let me have another well, go. Well let me go offline. No, no, but let me have another go. Over you were going to be in queue and buy a kitchen that had standard size cupboards, mm -hmm. right? But what you would do is you would make a kitchen, you'd optimise the amount of standard size cupboards you could put in. And then you would maybe get somebody to work around the spaces that perhaps were Right, okay. And, and that's what I'm talking about. Okay, but that's where we start moving into the micro capabilities and services and the extension of existing software, right? But, look, I'm not here to give a lecture. So calibration, you've got service architecture, document, what's that, product assessment? Product assessment, documentation, and risk management documentation. So we then went on to discussion as to whether or not it's calibration or alignment. Um, we were talking about different artifacts. Okay, well, um, I know you're coming from the risk, that's just, you know, okay. Yeah. Alright. But when we did digress into a discussion about alignment, whether it's alignment right. or, or whether it could be both. Oh. Okay, so on the creation side, you put team creation. And elaborate on that. As an artifact. I think this was more like a team structure, wasn't it? Yeah, team structure. Yeah. structure. Yeah. Did you say that? Okay. Because right. You, you might need to create a team for uh, for a given project to actually work in the business. So the, the idea was that when we are working on the business model, the roadmap, we need to engage with different departments. So we need to be clear what that team would be, which is helping in this business model, the business objective that we are after. Oh, right. We'll discuss this in the pub as well. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's. Are you I am actually. Right, so we had some <laughs> artifacts in just to get your brain ticket over. Um, these will be in the slides, but what I tried to do was divide. Uh, I've used this quite a few over the past few years. I didn't know Microsoft years ago. I've tried to break this up. Principles, practices, processes, patterns, portfolio management. This is on the slide deck. I don't want to spend too much time on this because... He doesn't want us all, can you? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I said that out loud. <laughs> don't start me off on this, ain't yeah. <laughs> um, Right. So, but this is really what I want us to get to. Okay. So I've got a list here. Right. Uh, it's in no, no order whatsoever, and you know it, it's. So, for me, what I'm seeing a lot at the moment, API management. That's an artifact in itself. You know, if you're yeah. nowadays, you're buying a lot of web services, the management of the interfaces between your system, producer, consumer. You know, that that's quite a big artifact. Um, the governance process, I call that an artifact. Um, and I've listed some stuff, okay? Listed some stuff. Um, reference models, I, I, I'm kind of changing my views on reference models at the moment, and I think we'll, we'll come back to that when we start talking about projects and things of value. Um, stakeholder engagement, stakeholder management. You know, if you're running an EA function, that's quite an important function because if they're paying your bill, and this is why I'm always asking, who's funding it? Because when you know who's funding it, that's when you know what outcomes you're going to produce as a function. Um, so I've put some stuff there. Uh, I mean, these will be up. These are up on slider, so we can use these. Okay. 
Um, this is just the starting of a list. Now I've started putting together a whole list and what I'm trying to do with this list is um, put some context to each product and then say where to use it. Okay? And this is why this session came about. Right, now we're going to start the good stuff. Okay? Which we're running a bit late. Right, okay. So, first of all, do you agree with this statement? Right? Irrespective of the project methodology, right? Forget what type of project you're using, right? Everything will have one of these, one of these. It will have a start, it will have a finish, it will have a cost, okay? So I'll say irrespective, don't care what project methodology you're using, a start, a finish and a cost. Okay, we all kind of agree with that, that's a no-brainer. Now, it may or may not have some milestones, it depends how you're running it, right? It may have a set of activities, it may have a set of service consumers and producers, it have one of many stakeholders, set of outcomes and values. So what I'm trying to say there is that every piece of work or project, whatever you want to call it, has one of these things. Okay? And that's quite important to remember. Can I add something to that as well, Dan? Um, it would also have quality, quality of the output. Yeah, I, I just want to see something quick. That's something else every, every project or programme will have yeah. quality. Some of you all seen it before. Pre-project, initiation, subsequent, blah, blah, blah. Now, if we map that down, we can say, right, analysis, design, build, test, deploy, you know, manage. Right, so as an exercise, what I wanted to do is say, right, let's try and map some of the artifacts to this. Yeah, okay, so this is the next section. Right, now, we're going to break up again in three sections. <laughs> now I've put control informed direct. Yeah? I like that because that's what enterprise architects do. Right? So what I'd like to do, and let's spend, just do two things. Let's not get carried away here. Yeah? Okay? Two artifacts that you would expect to see in a classic project. Okay? Two artifacts, that's all I want to see. Okay? Um, can we knock them up on the board? And then I, I want to give the reason I want to. Right. So if we can go back to our original groups, come up with two artifacts. Okay. Yeah. Well, two for the stages. Not, not so much the analysis design board test. That's just there to remind you that in the delivery you're doing all of that. In the final stage you're doing all of that. That's what I'm trying to do there. But just two artifacts that you would. Yeah. Just two artifacts. Don't even think about it. Just think of two things that you can have a beer later. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm from that. Anyway, so we've looked at a classic project. We've listed some artifacts down. Yeah? Okay? Now, what we're now going to do is go to the next type of project. And this is why I was asking for two. Now, the next type of project, right, is quite straightforward. Scrum, product backlog, uh, you've got product backlog, you've got sprint. Sprints, finished product, blah, blah, blah. I've thrown in Six Sigma there just to kind of get your mind working as well. So if you could think of, if you worked in an agile type environment, what are the two artifacts that you need to produce? Now don't cheat and say we need a product backlog, right? <laughs> Do not cheat and say we need sprint retrospective reviews, okay? Just think about projects you've worked in and you're knocking out really quick, okay? Two. We've got two, let's start. Come on, we want to move to the next one now. So that was the scrub. Have we all got two? Yeah, yeah? We brilliant. Oh, no, we're in trouble. Right, the next yeah, type yeah, of project, <laughs> the next type of project, Right, is what I call just do it. Oh shit. <laughs> I, I got that from Microsoft where purely outcome focused, time to market is critical, no thought is given to cost, cost and no project structure. 
you have to go to AT&T and says, right, we need this new cable, but they just do it. Right, okay? So what, and this, this is really the hard one, right? What are the kind of artifacts that we would want to produce? You say a solution, so we're going to go back to each one of these and map them back. But just think of two things in a JFDI type of scenario that you would want to produce. Or you would be, you think, you know what, I need to produce that because the system's going to be able to support and someone needs to support that. Yeah? So just two things. This is the hard one. Right, come on. Two. Have you got two? So you've got one. Proof of concept. Lovely. 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 Solution design documents. So we talked about three different project types. Yeah? Let's talk about those three, you know, let's talk about solution design document in the context of those three project types. Yeah? Uh, did you, you have solution as well? Did you have solution? Uh, yeah, solution and right. people got some same. Okay, so we have a solution design document, which is going to lead on to the next next slide. Yeah? Okay. Now when is it of value to produce one, right? And when is it of value not to produce one? So, for example, um, say for instance you're deploying Skype for business. Yeah? Okay? You laugh. You produce, you're deploying Skype for business, right? Now, would you need to produce a solution design document for Skype for business? Yeah. No, yes. Yeah. We're going to come back to that in the next slide. Right, okay. But a lot of the stuff is already produced. So if you go to Microsoft TechNet, they've already designed the deployment models, the patterns, they've done all the work for you. You just have to pick it and say, right, that's the hard one we're deploying. Right. So we're going back to this artifact and we've got three different type of projects. So would you need, uh, in a standard waterfall type project where life is a bit longer, right? You may want to produce a solution design document, no? Okay. In a, and we're going to go through each one of these, so we'll, I'll speed it up as much as possible, so please throw your bits in, right? In a scrum type project, would we need a solution design document? You need something to guide. Yeah. And so, right. so things to capture all of the NFLs, the security, maintainability, all that stuff, that's where it gets lost. If you don't have an overarching, now it's not going to be the same level as detail as a waterfall solution design document, but it will have the basic, what are the rules of my solution you guys have to be making? We've decided we're having these five chunks, but you can do what the hell you like doing those five chunks. So, you think it also, you need to have something. Yeah, it could be really, really simple. It has to be in so, the context of the organisation, yeah. so that you know... And the context of the project. Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. So, we're saying, as EAs, we will always come across... So now we're moving into our little EA domain, yeah? As EAs, we will always expect to see a design document of some kind, yeah? Whether it's heavy, lightweight, we will always expect to see one, okay? And the value in that is it gives the context of the system being built and deployed. Okay. So that's a tick in the box for all three types of projects. So no matter what type of project you're working on, right, even if it's one of those, we would expect to see a design document of some kind. Yeah? You see where I'm going with this, then we'll move to the next one. Then test strategy. Right. I think that's no brainer really. Um Okay. Right, so in a waterfall project, we'll have a test document, a test strategy. A lot of the test strategies I've read are more of these than there's a lot of waterfalls. Okay. Okay. No, they are. We're, we're, yeah. um, and the, my, my question is always how much value do they constantly keep adding? Right. So, 
when we're talking about a waterfall type project, I would say yes, you've got to have a test strategy, right? But more important than test execution plan, how you can actually do it. Uh, the test strategy is. So walk into a new business that you've never been into. If you want a business embedded, peace, it's reused, so it becomes yeah. an endemic part of the business and that you're used to it. Now go as a new employee. What's your test strategy for this business? Right, okay. So, first of all, it depends on the testing. Mm -hmm. okay, if you're testing a small piece of system. I oh, think... you said a big project, so. Oh, okay, big projects. Yeah. I think. Yeah, if you're just going to test, if you're correct, like the modification or the change rate, whatever. Well, when we talk about the test strategy, now we're going to say size is big, small, medium, you know. So what we're trying to get to is the value of it. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't. I, think, as a, I do think the test strategy is a value, even if it's only just to go through and say, we're not going to do that test, we're not going to do that. You can make informed decisions right. as to what you're going to do with it. Right, but when we map it to the different project types, what I'm trying to get to is a list. If I was drawing a matrix, yeah. I'd have the three project types and say, yes, I expect to see that. Yeah. So yeah. what I'll do is when we take these, I'll take these away and I'll put them in a little list and I'll try and... So we would expect a test strategy, yeah. but we, the complexity of it would vary depending on the project. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I ask you, yeah. the day your testing doesn't get full coverage and someone comes, comes knocking on the door saying what went wrong, and the first thing they say is where was your strategy? Yeah. Yeah. Risk-based strategy, let's go to that. Oh, yeah. anyway. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay, so another tick in the box. As an enterprise architect, we would always expect to see that. Yeah. Yeah? As an enterprise architect, we would expect to see a deployment. Uh, that's given. Uh, I think you always need it. Not so much a strategy, but... An approach? Yeah. You need something to show how you're going to deploy, what you're going to deploy, what the approach is going to be. You put the plan on the end of the Yeah, one. yeah, structurally plan. Yeah, you need okay. something for the deployment to approach. Yeah. Okay. So for me, I'd like not a deployment strategy, but the platforms and you know the level zero I normally yeah. do. You know, what the VMs are going to look like. Okay, so that's another ticket. Yeah, so I'd, like, so I'd look at that slide. So I'd, I'd tend to look pretty high quality implementation plan or whatever, but I'm typically looking for who's doing what, when, what they're doing. I don't necessarily get down into the detail of I like what machines so go where and what, because I, I, I suppose I expect to see that. In the, well, I like to see simple boxes. Yeah, like yeah. Presentation to you know, yeah. application to blah blah blah, what networks it's going to use, what firewalls around it. For me, you know, and then what what components are deployed on it. I'd like to see that. Yeah. The I planning think. side of it to me is like the next stage now. But that's mm. because first of all you need to know what your target's gonna be and then you say, right, okay, how am I gonna, you know, how many VMs am I gonna spin up yeah. and all that nonsense. Okay, so going back to as an EA, I would expect to see Tick, tick, tick so far. Stakeholder agreement plan. Yeah. Is that stakeholder management plan or No, I know where you're going, but now I'm going to this type of project. Would I, when my stakeholder is enabled? No. No. There'll be more. No Okay, right. Traditional project management. As an EA, I'm putting it out there now, would you expect to see a stakeholder agreement plan okay. in the three different project types? I'd expect to see something somewhere to say, go do it. Yeah. Now, in a JFDI, the stakeholder is normally the person shouting. <laughs> <laughs> so, the, okay. I'm assuming there'd be some record which says, he told me to go do it. <laughs> okay. All right. I, I'm, I'm going to try, as I said, I want to yeah. take all this okay. material, I'm going to try and put it in a matrix. And what I'll do is, I'll send it out to everyone, maybe we can start a little debate about it. Because mm -hmm. I, I kind of, yeah. All right, what's, what's that software design doc? Mm -hmm. This was for the... Um, the individual components? Yeah, very basically, you can go into your agile, which is the agile Right, okay. That's good one. It's about the only thing you have that records what the team's developing you've actually done. Right, okay, all right. Components, all right. I'll, I'll, yeah, all right. If that's got the component list and all the interfaces, then yeah, I agree. I would expect to see that. Most often, I literally just want to go read code for right. projects. Now, you're a solution architect, enterprise? Mm. Right. Now, what I'm trying to do is say, right, as an enterprise architect, would you expect to see that? Yeah. Right, okay. Tick in the box, job done. Right, the next one was that user stories. 
Yeah, yeah. yeah as an EA, you would expect to see that. Development list. Development list. Development list. Development list. So, signals of that list or the top list. Oh, which have been collected over the series. Yeah. Yeah, as an EA, would you expect to see that? You just want the outcome, don't you? Yeah, that would be. Yeah. I've assumed that project's doing So, as an SA, okay, definite. As an EA, maybe not. Okay. Finally, one up the mark for the next. Can I just call that bug list, yeah? Yeah. Although, saying that, if the project's running behind, you want to know what's going on, you might need to. Yeah. yeah, might, you know. As a, yeah, in a, only in a close exception. Yeah, you need to know as a reference point, don't you? Yeah. You, you wouldn't expect to see it as a standard document. But if there's a file, you need to drill down the internet. Well, yeah. Right, now, what we're doing is we're focusing on one particular type of system, aren't we? No, we're not now looking at we're saying, right, like, okay. Uh, user stories, yes, I'd expect to see that. Would you expect to see that? It's tricky one actually. Where do you draw the line between the EA and SA? Yeah, absolutely. We're well, going to get to that. Yeah, yeah. All right, you know what? Let's speed this up here. Um, yes, I think you would as user stories because you want to know what the system, what it's meant to deliver, and what reusable. Well, once, once the project runs, user stories can, can come into effect throughout the whole cycle of the project. And actually, as an EA, I'll be looking at governance across the project, but I wouldn't want to be getting down into the detail of the project. I would expect the user stories to be naturally created, dealt with, etc. in the life cycle. But they might, might say if you've spoken to all the right users. Well, I, yeah, I would say the same thing. I'd want to know that they're there as a reference point, but I probably wouldn't be that bothered. No. Um, right. so you can see. Let's, let's whip this through now. So I'm going to go through these quite quickly here. Yeah. Proof of concept. Um, I would always want to know the outcome of proof yeah. of concept. I would want to know about the proof of concept itself. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's a tricky one actually because you want to make sure it's, it's as designed. Well, proof of concepts are quick mock ups as yeah. well to give you that visualizer. Yeah. 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 Okay. What's that? Bug list, yeah. So. Bug list, so. Yeah. No. Right, okay. So we've got a couple of reds. So, let's do that one. So, what we're doing, as I said, we're going artifacts. As an EA, am I interested in these artifacts? As an EA, definitely interested in service architecture. Mm. Definitely, you want to know how it's going to go out there. Product assessment. Yeah. yeah that's actually the previous exercise. No, no, but they're all artifacts. Oh, yeah. So my yeah, kind yeah. of thing was throw the artifacts down there. Okay. I would say yes. Yeah. 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 Risk management document set. As an EA. Mm. Yeah, you need to know. Yeah, you need to know. Yeah. 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 Business risks are, don't you? All right, what's this? Um, so we're talking about the prints too, so we're talking about business case. Um, yeah, as an EA you want to see that. Because you've, yeah. you've got the project yeah. brief as well, but the business benefits. Right. Um, okay, right. Then we went all the way down. Okay, design docs. What's this AIS? Acceptance and service. Oh, it's production acceptance. Can I just change that? Yeah. I've got to line this up. As an That's EA, right, so as an EA, what do you think? I'm going to put it to you. Yeah. Lessons learned type. Project action review lessons yeah. learned. Yeah, because you want to understand if there are any impact back into the overall architecture. Yeah. yeah. So part of the government. Yeah. A bit like you might actually want to look at the PID, depending on the scale of the project. Yeah. If, yeah. It's, a, if it's a strategic project, absolutely. If it's a, a yeah, well, yeah, it's got key businesses. Alright, yeah. so you've got user personas. Which is your yeah, yeah, yeah. use stories. And cat board, okay. Yeah. CSFs. Yeah. Nia, do you really care about CSFs? Yeah. Think about three different project types. Yeah, I know, I'm trying to. <sighs> I can't no, no, probably that. not. I mean, I was thinking CSFs are very Stake on the map. I don't know, as a Nia, do you really. Okay. No, because you should be one of the stakeholders, not. Alright, we'll move on to the next one. Speed. And what I was trying to say was that they're two different things, right? Okay, and what I tried to do here is to say, right, as an EA, I'm interested in, you know, 
the impact of the system design, you know, product solution design, how it's going to impact the estate, that's what I'm interested in. And I'm not, I'm not this, I'm kind of, so basically I broke this down. Have a look at it if you get some time, right? Um, and this is what I think a solution architect does. I feel you have to be very careful because a little side screen. A lot of times the EAs will go down into the SA wall. And a lot of times the SA has to go up. You can see so there's a very thick grey boundary there. And this is why, right? And this is why I call it enterprise systems architecture. And I kind of like your wording because because we get a lot of waffle, right? Let's be honest. We do, you know, and, and the whole reason the whole enterprise architecture game is in a bit of a you know, and this is why I always start by asking the funding. The solution architecture, have a look at this, to, you know, send me your honest opinion, it's on my blog, have a look at it. And if I've done so options, I've done, you know, buy, build, yeah. extend all the usual kind of stuff, but I've tried to dissect it yeah. and say what are the products that are being produced. If there's anything wrong, you know, if you find a mistake, let me know because I'm should there be there's three roles that they've got the SA, you've got the text like TA and the architect. Yeah. Should aren't the three roles completely discreet? The fact that an EA may go down into an SA, if they can do that in the knowledge that so they're almost they're doing two jobs. So if you want a textbook answer, yeah. yes. Yeah. There is nowhere in the real world that they don't know something. No. And well, therefore, the textbooks are wrong. But that, that's similar with things like program and project management. People always get those, yeah. and business change. Okay. They always and, and get and those. <coughs> so there's what we teach in class. Yeah. All right? And then there's the rest of the world. Like, first thing you need to get your driving license is you learn to drive here. Yeah. Um, and I think in this community, we should be looking not what the textbook answer is, but actually what the real world answer is. But the textbook answer is there for a reason. The textbook is there for a reason to give a, a proper framework the that we teaching. should. No, that we should be. <laughs> We should be aspiring to. We should be. I don't, no, I disagree. Demarcation. We're talking about demarcation. Yeah, yeah. I, see, I actually yeah. disagree. The more flexible your workforce is, the more successful you are. If you start saying, I can't do that because I'm an EA, or I can't do that because I'm an SA. No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying that an EA can do an SA role, they can be merged, but there's got to be a knowledge, and that EA has got to be able to turn around and say, actually, I'm chugging over the line here. Um, but but they've got, you can only do that if you've got a lot of staff. So if you've got a solution architect and you've got an enterprise architect. In some of the organisations, they kind of like merge over and they have a pool of people and they share the work. I think, a guide, I think there's a guideline of what a VA should normally be doing, like yeah. the estate, the overall business understanding. Yeah. Great, but get, get that as you say, that is the generic area. But I think yeah. once you get to detailing this kind of level, if you don't draw the great boundaries and teach the great boundaries, you f it's a bit like having a BA in an essay. Right? If you don't recognise that the essay is actually part of the requirements capture process, and the VA is actually part of the solution design process, you forget how your team builds a solution. You say, mm -hmm. I'm going to stop that because they give me a BRD. Mm -hmm. Done, BA done, out. That's not right. So going back to the stack, I'm not going to try to go in time. No, I no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're on the I think that for me, an enterprise architect is someone who can sit down, do a SWOT analysis, understand all the spy forces, all of that stuff, understand the market, and understand where the business is going. I also think, and this is my bias, I think a good enterprise architect can actually then go down. Because mm. the thing is, if you can't, you, know, you work as a solution architect, if some enterprise architect come along and you would just think, waffle merchant, go oh away, God deliver. But no, you would. You know? <laughs> so I think you've got to be able to go up and go down. You know? And you know, you, you see my style, you know, yeah. you know, I think you need to be able to get down to this level as well as up there that level. I think I think you're right. I think you do need to go I'm not I don't think you do need to go uh, down up. I just think you need to understand where you are going down. Because you're almost doing a different role. And I'm not saying let's, I'm not going to be right. yeah. Let, let's flip this round. Yeah. Right, okay. And you know what I started at the beginning by talking about the value, mm -hmm. right? Let's flip this around. Your company is struggling. Okay? Your company is struggling. You know, market forces have impacted it. You're struggling to make money for profit. Right? Okay? What do we manage to You know what? Let's turn yeah. the video off. Turn it off. Let's stop there. Yeah? Right. So, <laughs> right. I will take these and I will map it all back and I'll try and. Um,
the, the key thing for me was what do you define as an artifact? I think, you know, it's good stuff. I've already got a list, right? Um, and I'll do a while for it. So, yeah, that's it, right? Right, the plan now. Oh, we don't use plan. Oh, no, there it is.